Welcome back, I'm Chuck, and today we're going to make the office cabinet with the sliding bar door. We have this wall in our office that there's really nothing on and it's kind of big, so we have this uh, printer over here sitting on just a random filing cabinet. I want to build a cabinet that has the printer inside of it, but it's not always shown and it needs to be fairly large to fill up this big space. This is about 16 feet across, so that's what we're gonna do. For the base of this project, we're gonna use 3 quarter inch birch plywood. I'm going to start by cutting that down to a manageable size with a circular saw and then cut all the pieces for the base at the table saw. We have all the pieces cut to size for the cabinet and now we are going to put pocket holes in all the boards to connect them and I will leave a card up in the corner for the review I did on the Craig pocket hole machine. You can check that out later. Thanks. Next step is to connect all the pieces of the base with uh, pocket holes and I'm going to put the shelves in and for the bottom of the cabinet I want it to be as high as the trim board so I am going to take the 1x4 mark a line across and that is where I will attach the bottom shelf so it sits flush with the bottom trim. I reinforce these pocket holes with some wood glue. Finished with the base of the cabinet and the next step is to make the face frame. We are going to put a shelf in here, but it's going to be on um, drawer slides so it can pull out. I'm going to actually put my printer on there and we're going to have barn door hardware and the door is going to cover up that slide to the side when we need to access the printer. The next step is to make the face frame and make all the measurements and go ahead and make that and attach it. This is why you need a huge assembly table. We have the face frame all built. Now it's time to <laughs> glue it and brown nail it to the cabinet. I know they make devices for this. I know somebody's gonna tell me they make devices for this. That's fine. I know I have to open it for the glue to come out. I have the face frame put on and we glued it and clamped it, rad nailed it together. And the next part is to work on the top. I have some two by eights that I'm gonna use for the top, so I'm gonna get started on those. Now I'm gonna sand the boards for the top. I'm gonna to start out with 80 grit. This is lumber, so it's pretty rough, and uh, sand all the way up to two points. Everything is sanded down and the next step is to apply the finish and I am going to use this dark walnut Danish oil that I used on my daughter's desk and her dresser. You can check those videos out as well and we are going to go ahead and get started with the finish. This product is advertised that it is a single step finish with a stain, seal and protect all in one. I usually do 
However, go ahead and add some kind of a sealer or polycrylic or a polyurethane on top of it. While we're waiting on this finish to dry, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get notified whenever we put out a new video. We got the barn door hardware in and I ran into a little problem. I figured using a one x four would be big enough, but this hardware is larger than I thought. So for this to be anchored on there, it's going to have to be lower to not stick up above where the top is. What I'm gonna have to do is get a piece to put in each of these spaces. I'm gonna use a one by three. And when I put this one by four up here, there's plywood behind it to reinforce it because this hardware and the door is gonna be heavy. So I'm gonna reinforce it down here too. I'm gonna glue it and pocket hole it and put some L brackets in there to hold it in place. Hopefully it's strong enough to work. We'll find out. We have the top extended down and hopefully it's gonna be strong enough to hold the hardware plus the door. If you're interested in this hardware, I'll have it linked down in the description. Now it's time to cut the door. So I got the angle right. With the length of these, it's sometimes better to sneak up on the cut and have it a little long because you don't want it to cut it short. So I just need to trim off about a sixteenth of an inch and it should be good. Like a glove. Next I'm going to cut one exactly like this and I will just cut the center out at the opposite angle and we'll glue it all in there. Have all the pieces in for the center and now we need to pull them back out, glue them and brad nail them. We need to cut the back for the cabinet and then we'll be ready for paint. So I get asked sometimes why I do a lot of my cuts outside because it is kind of hot here in Oklahoma in the summer. But I don't like to have to clean up all the mess in the garage and it's just easier to take my Ego brand blower and blow everything off. We have the top in place, it's just kind of stressing there. I'm going to attach it with these brackets. I wanted to hide the printer behind the barn door, but I still wanted to have access to it in case I needed to pull it out for some reason. So I put it on a shelf that has drawer slides so I can pull it out, we can open it up, change the ink or whatever, and still push it back in and for the most part just keep it Close behind there. We're all finished. This is how it turned out. It has the uh, sliding barn door so we can kind of hide our printer and still have access to it but other than that it just looks like a cabinet so if you uh, like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up and there's another video for you to watch over here and you can subscribe over here. Thanks for watching. In this hardware it's uh, it'll yeah, blah, blah, blah. now it's time to cut the door and we're gonna have uh, two by eights. We're gonna use for the other. We're gonna use.